to A Fiddle Around Town. I'm Caddy, and today's show is all about Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. We are going on a road trip. We're going to check out Dollywood, Dolly Parton's world-class theme park. We'll visit the Great Smoky Mountains, and we will see the violin that was played on the Titanic. I'm a big Dolly Parton fan, and I've always wanted to go to Dollywood. It's been on my bucket list. Dollywood or bust. So we headed off to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Pigeon Forge is one long street with something for everyone. Rides, go-karts, shows, miniature golf, pancake houses, it all fits in 10 traffic lights. There's music everywhere. We started our evening at the island. Then it was time for the big day. Dollywood is at traffic light number eight. They have a trolley from a park there that goes right to Dollywood and it's 50 cents. Dollywood is beautiful. There's this coal-fired steam train, Klondike Katie. She goes through the park and the foothills of the mountains. There are shows going on all day long. Really good shows.
checked out Dolly's bus. This was actually her bus until 2009. Don Warden was her longtime manager, and he drove that bus for 15 years. It had a big tank. They could drive 32 hours without refueling. That's Nashville to L.A., nonstop. Dolly said it was her home away from home, and that all those miles inspired a lot of her songs. I loved the bus. I could imagine her getting ready for gigs there. She had her outfits and her makeup area. I could see her writing songs there. I felt like a serious fan taking pictures of the shower, but it was so pretty the way it was fixed up. It makes you want to go on a road trip, doesn't it? For me, my favorite part of Dollywood was her Chasing Rainbows Museum. Oh, well, hello, everybody. How are you? Well, I hope you had a wonderful time here at Dollywood. You know, I always wish that I could personally greet each and every guest that comes here. Well, as it turns out, that's another one of my dreams that I was able to make come true. So welcome to my Chasing Rainbows Museum. I know Dolly has an incredible career, but it really hits you when you see it all in one place. She was the fourth child in a family of 12 children, and there's a whole section about her childhood, growing up in the mountains of Tennessee. She wrote a song, The Coat of Many Colors, about a coat her mom sewed for her made from different rags. She was proud of that coat, but the first day she wore it to school, everyone made fun of her. You can actually see the coat, they also did a TV special called The Coat of Many Colors that talks about that very coat. Dolly grew up singing church songs, and church was a big influence on her music. Her grandpa was a reverend, and several people in her extended family played music. So you see some of the instruments they had then, and some of her relatives that were a big part of her musical upbringing. There's a section devoted to the time she spent working with Porter Wagner. He had the Porter Wagner TV show, and she was on that for around seven years when she was starting out. Her song, I Will Always Love You, that was actually about her professional break from working with Porter Wagner. It wasn't really a love song in the way we think of it now with Whitney Houston and the Bodyguard movie version of it. Elvis wanted to record that song too but he wanted Dolly to give him the publishing rights, and she was too smart for that, so that never happened. Dolly has a ton of hit records, including a new one just out this month, which is all about love. It's called Pure and Simple, and that song is my personal favorite. I love seeing all the outfits and all the glitter.
you see video of a lot of her projects. She did radio, TV, and film in addition to her music. Remember that movie, Nine to Five? In a world of one-hit wonders, it's nice to see an artist that has continued to grow and develop and branch out for new projects. Dolly Parton seems to be looking forward, but also never forgetting her roots. As you leave, there's a segment about her imagination library, but she started to bring a love of reading to the kids in her county. They mail a book a month to kids so they can have a book of their own. We watched a cute show at Dollywood that was based on that book, The Little Engine That Could. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Hey, that's very good. You know, when parents read to their children regularly from birth through their preschool years, a lot of really wonderful things happen. Oh, I'm out of here. Hey, Dad, you want to come down and see The most poignant part of the exhibit for me was a letter that Dolly had written to her parents. She wrote it the week she moved to Nashville. She was homesick. It wasn't what she was expecting. It made me realize how brave it was for a young girl from the mountains to pick up and follow her dream in a really big way. I also went to check out the Dixie Stampede. It's a dinner show with 32 incredible horses and skilled riders doing all sorts of stunts. And let me tell you, the horses are beautiful. Before the show, you can visit the horse walk. You have a chance to see some of the horses up close. I really enjoyed that part. The show opens with this covered wagon scene, and then they start singing. At first, I thought it might be a little hokey, like, a Broadway show with horses! But the riders come out, and they're incredible. Lots of trick riding. True showmanship. Lights. Music. Southern bells. And when they all come out and ride together, it's absolutely stunning. You're eating a southern meal during all this. So during dinner, one of the workers came over and asked if I would be in the show. She said I would be pouring water. And that's how I ended up in the Bucket Relay. It was the North against the South, and my team was representing the South. We had to fill up that whole barrel of water and pop the balloon as fast as possible before the other team. I ran pretty hard. Maybe you can tell by my hair. The best part was, we won! And there was a cowboy at the end to give us our medals. We got back to our seats in time for the grand finale. And it was a grand finale. The song was Color Me America, written and recorded by Dolly Parton, so 
Of course I loved it. It was patriotic and glittery, a night to remember. And I have my medal as a souvenir. I'd heard about the Titanic Museum. It's one of the many attractions in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And then I found out that the violin that was played on the Titanic was going to be there the two weeks that I was there. So of course I went. Ask any musician and they'll tell you, your instrument is very personal. It's like your child. The band leader on the Titanic was Wallace Hartley, and this was his violin. He played it while the ship was sinking, and the rest of the band played with him. They played till the very end. We're here at the Titanic Museum where we came for the special violin tour. I knew I'd love seeing the violin. I wasn't prepared for how emotional the whole place was. That violin sold for 1.7 million. They found Wallace Hartley in the water 12 hours after the boat sank. He had his violin strapped to him in that suitcase. The tour makes you feel very connected to the passengers. When you start it, they give you a boarding pass for a real person that was on the Titanic. You find out at the end if you survived or not. I was Madeline Astor, and I survived. I loved the room for the musicians. They even let me play the piano. For one of them, it was his first gig on a ship. If you're in Pigeon Forge, go see the Titanic Museum. It's a beautiful exhibit. We could not go to Tennessee without visiting the Great Smoky Mountains. They're just outside of town. We drove through Gatlinburg, which is a colorful touristy place, lots of traffic actually, and it has a Space Needle. Being from Seattle, I found their Space Needle pretty small, but it was fun to see it. And then we were there, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. You get a sense of how beautiful it is the second you start driving in the park. They say it's the most visited national park in the United States. And the border between Tennessee and North Carolina actually runs through the center line of the park. There are 850 miles of trails and unpaved roads, including part of the Appalachian Trail. Next time I go, I'm going to spend more time there. It's gorgeous, and you could easily spend a few days there. Living in New York or any big city, you really miss those big open spaces, and overlooking those mountains was one of the highlights of the trip. It's halfway to St. Patrick's, so just to get you in the mood, here are some Celtic clips for you. Gotta get the nails done. Which one? to apply this on the side. Okay.
Until next time, I'm Caddy Finlayson and you are watching A Fiddle Around Town.